January 21st. That is the Los Angeles Forum, the main event, the bad guy versus the bad boy from Huntington Beach. And we will be there. <clears throat> we will be there. Um, Chill, I want to ask you, and, and you've had a lot of a lot of big fights in your life, um, championship fights, title fights, uh, challenge for the title, Anderson Silva, John Jones, the best in the world. Where does this fight? I mean, honestly, where does this fight line up to you? Is this a fun? Is this a fight that you're going to say this is the biggest fight of my life, or are you going to come back and go, you know, this is a really interesting fight, a fun fight, but it's not the biggest? Well, I can tell you, it's an important one for me. It's, it's one that I wanted to win since the '90s. I was. I was at the top of this game in the 90s, and I couldn't get my opportunity. It wasn't until 2005 that I finally broke through uh, and got a UFC contract. And I, I'd sit at home. You know, I'm fighting at the dog park for free uh, in front of my mom and dad and, and whoever else showed up, and it wasn't very many people. And what, I'm fighting killers. Was the first I'm not fight the attention. Was the first fight in Uncansville, Connecticut, was that your first fight, 48, UFC 48? My, that was my first UFC, yes. I actually cornered against and, you. <laughs> oh, oh, you were Babalu? I was this, yeah, Babalu. Babalu lived with me at the time. I I taught he him English. That's my guy. fault. Yeah, no, he told me he, he told me he offered to, he told me guy. he offered to come help you for this fight. He did. He, he absolutely <laughs> did. And I don't know if that's because he liked me or if he has something with Tito. He he didn't elaborate, but uh, it's, uh, it's yeah, a combination. Yes. Hurt his eye, and his yeah. his eye is getting better, but. Yeah, I've got great memories of that night, and you know, my frustration did come from. I mean, it's a hard business to break into, as you guys know, and, and the, the the sacrifices and the struggles and the dedication and the clear, uh, flat out patience that you have to have to try to get into one of these these shows to get a little opportunity and exposure. Man, it's tough. And I was going through that. And I was what Tito was the champion of the world. I'm going, guys, I'll whip his ass right now. I'm sitting in a room full of my friends, my family. I'm saying, guys, I'll whip him right now. I whipped him when we were kids. I will whip him now. He wouldn't even be the world champion if I was in that organization. And that is the contention I have made from day one. Now, I'm either right or I'm wrong. But on January 21st, we're going to find out. All my friends and all my family that I've been telling for 20-some years, I was the best fighter in the world a decade before I got my break-in start, they're all going to be watching to find out, was Chael telling us the truth, or is he wrong? And that's what this fight's about for me. So is this the, the biggest fight I've ever had? You know, for me, it was, it was for a world championship. Uh, this isn't for a world championship, but I can tell you, it's important, it's meaningful, and, and my grassroots life of friends and family and neighbors and teammates and coaches, I have been telling them from day one in the 90s, that guy would not have the belt if I was there. The guy with the mohawk and tattoos on his skull running around looking like a <laughs> fool, he never would have had the belt had I been in there. <laughs> um, but it was it was an opportunity issue, man. I had a great team back then. Well, and it was we different back then. Yes, it's exactly. not like today yeah, when, when had... there's a show every week and I see guys with three fights in the UFC now. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I had I had guys, uh, you know, just in, in the room that were my, my, my mentors and training partners. We had three world championships in the room. So I knew exactly where I stood. And I can tell you, there was only one guy alive in the 90s that could whip my ass, and his name was Randy Couture. And he was your and, coach, right? Yeah, that's right. And as far as, you know, Tito and these other guys, I think they had great careers. I don't want to uh, diminish what Tito did. He's a stud. He just, he's just not me. Yeah. Well, see, you know, I know a lot of people don't know this, but you guys wrestled in college, and you ended up sticking him. You, you pinned him in what, the first round, second round? What was first it minute. First 60 minute. seconds. So, first see, minute. I, I now train with the same coach as Tito. I train with J Jason Prillo now. I just, just started for this this the most recent training camp I've had. And, and to be honest, I mean uh, – it's still it, that that pisses Tito off. I mean, so you're you, you're you're the guy that's stuck in his head. You know, you're you're already there. And I know wrestling in high school and college, you you get beat. You always have a thing. You don't forget. You don't. You, you do not forget that. And he has not forgotten that at all. So uh, I, yeah, and you know, and that flatters me. <laughs> Tito, Tito, I never would have brought this match up. I didn't know the tape was going to surface. I, even when I was trying to climb the ladder, I never mentioned that. But Tito brought it up, and I was flattered by that. You know, this is the guy that went on and won the world, and he knew I was jealous. He knew I was tra uh, chasing him, and he put me over. He's the one that put me over and said, "Actually, that guy pinned me, and it was my birthday, and it it de it really defeated me, really broke me at that time of my life. I didn't know any of those things, but I was grateful. I thought that was a cool move that, that Tito brought it up on my behalf." Now, Chell, I'm going to ask you a question, and, and it's going to sound like I'm being more negative about Tito than I'm really trying to be, but I'm not. <laughs> but is one of the reasons that you looked at Tito and said, I know I can whip that guy's ass back in the day, 
I mean, if you really look at his record, he was fighting a bunch of middleweights. He wasn't fighting two hundred five ers. He was fighting Frank Shamrock, who's, who's really a one eighty five er, and Vanderlei Silva, who's really a one eighty five er, Yuki Kondo, <laughs> Evan Tanner, Elvis Sinisek, those uh, Vladimir Mudashenko. I mean, you, Sinisek and Mudashenko, you could say are small two hundred five ers, but the rest of those guys are one eighty five ers. I mean, Tito really built his name by smashing middleweights. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that that's fair. I had never thought about it in those terms until you said it, but I, I don't know that I would disagree. I mean, look, uh, look at those six Tito, guys in a row. Not one of them are nearly as big as him. Yeah, Tito made it a very long way. Uh, also, he was in good shape. He wasn't scared to, to go out there and to compete against anybody under any rule circumstance. Three rounds, five rounds, championship, main event, this country, that country. He was a competitor. But he had positions, and his positions were absolutely dominant. If Tito gets on top of a guy, he's got as good a ground and pound as I've ever seen. And, you know, if I'm getting ready to go into this fight with him, I don't think he's got a lot of opportunity. I don't, I don't think he can keep up conditioning. I don't think his body's held up. I don't think he's as fast. I could be wrong, but this is what I think. I do acknowledge if he gets on top of me, he's going to hurt me. He's hurt everybody he's ever got on top of, and I, I don't want to be underneath him. Now, I mean, Tito is, you know, styles make fights. Tito has used his wrestling uh, in ninety percent of his wins, just like you say, getting on top of guys. But he's never wrestled at a world class level or even a, a national level, really, has he? No, no, definitely not. And it's, it's a different league when he get when he gets in there with a Randy Couture, or when he wrestles with somebody who's wrestled on a world class or national level. Is, is that why you feel so confident? I mean, look, his strength is getting on top of guys, and there's no way he's going to get on top of me. Yeah, I think he'd have a hard time getting on top of me. You know, he's got a shot, and I, I, I don't underestimate it. He, man, I slipped in there before and fallen down, and guys <laughs> end up on top. You know, you end up in takedowns in MMA that, that aren't just clean takedowns. I was just sparring tonight, and, and that happened to me, but in my favor. The, the other guy slipped, and I came on top and held him there for a while. Um, so that's the reality of it. I, I don't anticipate that, uh, that I could make any assurances that he'll never get to his position. I just know if he gets there, I respect it, and I do not plan to stay there. I will work, 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 hustle, scramble, and get back up. I don't want to be trapped there. And he does his stuff on his feet, too. He gets the double underhooks. He was very good at that, even in amateur wrestling. He's very big. You know, if you guys remember, he got him on Ken Shamrock and literally picked Ken off the fence and then walked him across the ring and pinned him against the cage before he commenced to beating on him. So... You know, he's got some spots where he really uses that size and strength. And, uh, you know, aside from that, I think that he's a regular guy, and which means he's tough and he's skilled and he knows how to use all of his weapons. I just think those are the two positions that he's better than regular. I think he's exceptional there, and, and those are the ones that I'm thinking about. It's very true. I mean, th- those are his best attributes as a fighter. And, and you know, he, he he's very good in those positions, but... I mean, as far as I look at it, it's getting you in those positions is going to be a very, very hard thing to do. Yeah, I think so, too. You know, I mean, I know a double underhook. The guy's got to get one before he can get the second one. You get pummel, you circle. I mean, yeah, I spent my life working on those positions. Uh, it, but it is a matter of, again, it's kind of like I said, you, you slip, you end up on the ground. If he gets something or, or I'm underestimating him, I, I've got to work. I cannot lay there and play the guard game and hope for a submission. It, it doesn't work when a guy's elbowing you in the face. And he's got those, those really good short elbow, uh, short elbow offense. And, and he does a great job. He pins guys in fences and just bludgeons them until the ref pulls him off. I, I, I don't discount any of that. I, I'm just arguing that I can hustle out of there. I can work harder, and I've got the skills to get up and get rid of that position. Chael, one, one more question before we get to our uh, uh, song again. Um, this fight is, you know, Tito's not a small, light heavyweight. And you in the past have, have fought at both light heavyweight and middleweight, but you're by no means a giant light heavyweight. And, and you fought you know, guys like John Jones who were certainly bigger than you. Is that, is, has there been a point to that? Like, Were you fighting guys bigger than you on purpose or did it just work out that way? Or did you want that challenge? Like, hey, I want to fight bigger guys. If I beat them, it's more of an accomplishment. Well, I kind of always worked out that way. When I first got in the sport, I had my first fight in 1997. I don't think there's anybody in this sport at a meaningful level that can date themselves back as far as I can. And back then, we didn't have weigh-ins. Your coach would, would send a list up to some other gym and, and his coach, and they, they'd look at the list and who weighed what and what their sizes were, and that was it. And uh, I always had these guys on my team that would lie about their weight. They would lie and try to take 20 pounds off. And, uh, you know, they wanted to be the bigger guy. So I would lie, too. I would just say I was 20 pounds bigger than I was. That was my way of setting an example for these guys that, you know, don't be a bully. 
Yes. You know, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna stack the deck, man, stack it against yourself. Don't try to don't try to cheat some other guy from across town. So I would I've started fighting in the heavyweight classes. I show up to weigh in, be like one ninety three, fighting guys that were two and a quarter. But I was I was proving a principle at that point. So you know that, that that's what invigorated me. That's what I hung my hat on was you know I've got I've got the the moral correctness on my side and. Uh, you know, I went out there. My dad didn't know what we were doing, so he stayed home. My dad was a big fight fan, but I didn't. I guess I didn't explain it to him well. It was called Vancouver Kickboxing, <laughs> and we were going to do pancreation, and he didn't know what pancreation was. It's like, Dad, I got a fight tonight, and he's like, Ah, what's this pancreation? You know. So my mom went with me. My mom went. She was a corner <laughs> man. I love it. And she, yeah, she filmed it and came home and showed it to my dad. He's pissed that he wasn't there. Took it to work. Showed it to all of his buddies. Uh, That's four awesome. or five times over. Yeah, he made him just keep watching. That's quite a, was, you know, by the way, punch him, fight. honey, punch him. By the way, that's quite a drive from Oregon. That's not a <laughs> short drive to Vancouver. No, no, it wasn't easy. No, it, it took all day. We jumped in the car on Saturday. We made it. And, How and old were you at this point? With, I was uh, 19. Nice, nice. Yeah, I was 19 years old. I was still in college. I, I, I drove up on the weekend, grabbed my mom, went and did this competition and came back, but yeah, the point I'm getting at is, I, so I just, I never really cared about guys' size. And then, you know, a guy I look up to, Dan Henderson, Dan Henderson did his best work at heavyweight from beating Big No Garrett to beating Fedor Malenko. You know, he was one of those guys where size did not matter. He liked being a little bit faster and, and being able to make sure his conditioning held up. So he always took on the bigger guys. And, uh, you know, he influenced me too. So uh, where it goes or where it comes from, I don't know, but I really don't care what guys weigh. I think it's a little weird that we weigh in. I think it's even weirder that people come and watch, you know, guys get <laughs> naked and step on the scale for two seconds. <laughs> yeah. I think that whole process is a little bizarre. It seems like it should be a little more private to me. But if it helps to sell tickets and it's part of the business, then we all got to play along. But I, I really don't care what a guy weighs.